All right, everybody, it is Steve, the Rogue Scholar, and we're going to go on a trip down memory lane through history a little bit today. And we're going to try and make heads or tails of why so many of the things that we believe today just ain't so in many cases. And in many cases, we don't understand why things are the way they are. So we end up coming up with some really bad conclusions and we start making decisions based on bad information it's like, hey, you know, wouldn't it be great if I made this big giant per purchase today? You know, I think I got paid today, you know, right? You look in your bank account and it's like, hey, there's no money in there, but you already sent the check and now you get a bounce fee, all that crap, right? <clears throat> it's it's a matter of knowing. It's a matter of having knowledge, not just repeating what someone else said. And, and I want to start this thing off with a little bit of humor. Um some of y'all may have seen the movie wreck it ralph or ralph breaks the internet and i want you to think about where this piece comes in as i explain to you this one one thing that i want you guys to have in your heads as we go down memory lane and i just want you to think about what i'm going to show you it's it's an abstract so for folks that are very literal thinkers it's going to make your mind explode because God damn how Steve using Ralph breaks the internet and wreck it Ralph and all this shit to kind of make some important point. I don't know if I'm going to be successful or not, but I'm going to give it a shot, right? I'm going to give it a shot. So without further ado, let me go ahead and put this thing on. This is going to be fun. The bunny gets the pancake. <laughs> oh, that's priceless, isn't it, folks? That is absolutely priceless. What that was supposed to show you is, is the idea of they're just printing money, right? They're just printing money, man. It's just non-stop printing money. And this mindset has been throughout history. We look back at Weimar Republic. We look at Venezuela. We look at Argentina. We look at all the standard hyperinflations that are constantly thrown in our face and the history behind it and everything else is completely lost. Okay. And obviously we're in inflationary times. And so what's happening now? It's happening is all around social media, the news, all the different financial reports. They're showing you a Fred report, which is the St. Louis Federal Reserve. And they're showing how once Biden took office, the spike went through the roof with all the money being printed. OK, I want you to understand. <laughs> very, very important. Ralph and this whole shoving pancakes in the bunny's mouth. If, if we are printing money. And we're just shoving money out, shoving it. We don't need any more money. God, please stop printing money. Oh, my God. It's like, whoa, and you explode, right? Because there's just so much money being printed, right? If that's, if that's the real story, if that's a story you're going to hang your hat on, okay? Well, it's wrong, right? Because what they don't show in the money printing scene, okay, is that there's a drain at the bottom. And so while money always, 
always new money being spent into the economy. Always, 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 never not. They're always printing money. Every single time the federal government spends, they are printing money. Every time, not sometimes, every single time. No matter, even if they raise taxes through the roof, even if suddenly they made it a 95% tax rate, even if it was 95, 99% tax rate, okay? Every time the federal government spends, it's new money. So they're always printing money. But when you tax, it deletes it out the bottom of the fucking drain, okay? So money being spent in is like the pancakes. They're trying to say, this is what they're doing. They're just printing money, man. They're just printing money, and it's going to destroy the economy. Oh, my God. These horrible, evil, wicked losers that do this. These fucking horrible, jackbooted brown fucking shirts. These fascist scum that talk about printing money. These worthless people awful evil people okay that think this and they are these are the the sig heil right wing folks okay hey let's go for bitcoin they're to de appreciate the currency they're printing money right i'm telling you every time the government spends a nickel it's a new nickel and every time it taxes it deletes money out so the bunny never gets filled to the rim with brim OK, they're always taxing and removing money from the currency, just like when they're spending. Now, sometimes because the rich have hoarded so much money and it's all at the top and it's not in the productive economy, people don't have enough money to buy bread. People don't have enough money to buy water because you got to pay for water now. People don't have enough money to pay for their electricity or whatever. Right. Without money being spent into the economy, those at the bottom never see any. And that's when the economy starts drying up because the demand leakage with the rich holding the money at the top. Now, mind you, even if you tax the shit out of the rich, all you're doing is deleting their money. That still hasn't fed a single poor person. Your taxes literally don't fund spending. So this idea of printing, 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 printing money is missing the fact that they're constantly destroying, 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 destroying money through the tax, okay? Every year, folks, some of you, I know I do, owe tax dollars, owe tax money at the end of the year, and you're getting ready to write this big check to the IRS, and you're saying to yourself, wonder what those sons of bitches are going to do with my money. They're going to delete your money. Because that's what taxes do at the federal level. They fucking delete them. Okay. So the bunny rabbit's not going to explode. That's not how this works. Now I'm telling you this. Why? Why am I telling? Why does this matter in, a, in terms of a history lesson that we're going to talk about? Because what happens is history is told by the victor if you will, in all these wars and all whoever has the dominant narrative, whoever has the, the power of the media, whoever has the power of the textbooks, whoever's ordering the textbooks, whoever's choosing the textbooks that they're going to use, all these things are fed to us. Okay. And what has been fed to us over the years, history has told us that naturally Weimar Republic printed money. So they went into hyperinflation, Zimbabwe printed money. And so that's why they went into hyperinflation, Argentina, Venezuela, they printed money and that's why they went into hyperinflation. And that's what you're reinforced 24 by seven by 365 hammer and nail, bam, bam, bam. And I know some of you out there saying, Steve, can you stop talking about this? No, I can't. If I stop talking about it, who else will talk about it? No one. You'll still hear the same worthless shit stains in our movement talking about hyperinflation and printing money, and you will never, ever get the truth if somebody doesn't keep talking about it. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to talk about this stupid ass subject. This subject that keeps coming up that shouldn't come up, that you should be perfectly comfortable and completely within yourself to know how to rebut and shoot back and smack the taste out of their mouths for daring to talk about, oh, they're printing money. Pop, smack them. Drop the L. Bam. You know, rake the eyes. Don't let them get away with this stuff. Don't let them get away with talking about printing money. Okay? Now, Let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go way back a little bit, right? And you look at so many examples that are used as these celebration points, these wonderful 
points in history that we're supposed to look at and revere, like the American Revolution. Okay. And we look back and we always celebrate the French Revolution and we celebrate all these different things. It's like half Independence Day. Dun, dun, dun. We're independent from England. Yay. That never benefited you and I. It never benefited us. Not that it matters. I mean, who wants to be a colony of England? Who wants to be a colony of any other place, right? You want to be your own thing. I get it. But this revolution that we experienced in the United States that we stand by and celebrate constantly was a bourgeois revolution. It was not a revolution of the people. It was a bunch of rich fucks that didn't want to pay their tithes, so to speak, back to the motherland in England that didn't want to be a colony anymore, wanted to keep those proceeds for themselves. And you see people to this day, knees pumping, arms pumping, you know, got the old flute going, do -do 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 all the other stuff, right? Everybody is thinking whistling Dixie, and they're so excited, and 4th of July will be coming up here not too long from now. And many people will celebrate the living shit out of this. But the fact of the matter is, is that the very people that wanted to fight that revolutionary war were the same people that starved the average rank and file person, the same people that held slaves, the same people that literally took the teeth out of slaves' mouths to make replacement teeth for themselves, the same people that went ahead and took people and while they're starving, stored grains in, in shelters and wouldn't let them have food. We're not talking about good people, folks. We're not talking about good people at all. In fact, we always talk about our founding fathers, okay? Why do we talk about founding fathers? They're the people that came to this country who said, oh, look at these American Indians. Aren't they so nice, these indigenous people? They're so nice. They'll make a great slave. And they sat there, and these guys didn't know anything. They weren't trying to fight them. They weren't trying to hurt anybody. They were giving them maize. They were giving them food. They were giving them shelter. They were sharing with them. And what did they do? They fucking slaughtered them. These quote-unquote founders, these colonizers slaughtered them. Okay? And all these founding documents that we have, that we hang our hat on, the United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all these different things that we, the rule of law. All of this was put in place not to protect you and I. The blue line of the police is not there to protect you and I. It never was. It has always been there to protect private property. And not private property of the poor slobs that are desperate, but private property for the well-to-do. It's always been there to block, to block anyone from doing better. Now, I want you to understand something. You go back in time and you go back and you hear about the great American triumph over Nazi Germany, stuff like that. Well, folks, I got to tell you, seriously, it was the Russians that took down Adolf Hitler and the Russians who paid in blood took down Adolf Hitler. They paid bigly as they were invaded, as Germany came into Stalingrad, okay? As Germany came in there and just took the fight to the Russians, the Russians beat their ass at great expense, okay? But the United States, what is not often known is that the United States financiers like J.P. Morgan and DuPont and all these others were literally bankrolling the Nazis. And worse, let me just put it in real terms, the factories that were in Germany, in Berlin, that were owned by DuPont and all these others, while we were carpet bombing the hell out of Germany, those factories, those American factories were literally on the X mark. Don't, don't touch them. But they were literally creating the Luftwaffe. They were literally creating the German panzer tanks. They were literally creating all those things. The U.S. companies were over there. They wanted to side with Hitler. Yes, and the Bush family supported Nazis for sure. But this is our history, folks. <laughs> And we go back through time and we celebrate our great heroic struggles. But I want you to understand something. 
every single war that we've fought in the name of protecting freedom. It's not been in freedom in terms of like real freedom. It's this quote unquote fake economic freedom. And it's not freedom for the people. It's freedom for corporations to spread their market ideology into these countries. Vietnam. Do you think Vietnam was about freedom? Those people were in squalor and they were still fighting tooth and nail, tooth and nail for Vietnam, for their own government. Okay. These folks didn't have a pot to piss in, but they knew they did not want American exceptionalism. They knew they did not want, they did not want neoliberalism. They didn't even know what it was called at that. They didn't even want this free market ideology. They didn't want the U.S. capitalists coming in and capitalizing on their world. And so what did the U.S. do? Again, I've talked about this a bunch lately, but I'm going to keep talking about it because I want you to really understand. As we left World War II, and we had defeated Nazism, right? This thing that we had actually supported. And you could go look at pictures of New York City Nazi party, uh, you know, uh, gatherings, horrible things where they got the big, huge swastikas and people marching in line, Sig Heiling in New York City at Madison Square. I mean, literally, this is the U.S., this is your nation you're so proud of. This is the stars and bars. This is these colors don't run. This is your flag. And Democrats and Republicans were more than happy to sidle up with Nazis. Okay? Sidle up with Nazis. And every war after World War II, when we would go into Africa, when we would go into Cuba, I mean, think about this. Cuba. The Bay of Pigs failed. Why? The people didn't want what we were selling. They didn't want what we were selling. Folks, do you realize that Cuba has more doctors? Cuba has more teachers per capita than the entire of USA. No joke. They have more doctors and they have more teachers. They have more art teachers. They have more athletic coaches. They're teaching kids how to live there. They have a society that is built around the people. Is it perfect? No. But I want you to understand something. Every single time the United States sends its freedom fighters down there to save these poor communist countries from communism, we end up fighting to destroy their entire social fabric. We end up going down there to install market-based economies, to install neoliberalism. Not for the people, but for markets. This is capitalism. This is hyper-capitalism, okay? And this is what we're experiencing today. Every war that you see these days is about resources, is about geopolitical strategies for paving free markets, for opening markets up in countries, period. Folks, nothing else matters. Everything else we talk about, this is the deal. This is the deal. Every one of these places that we go into war with, it is to clear markets. Yes, here. I'm going to put this up. Thank you, Greg. That's very important. I want you to understand that when the Democrats look to privatize things, this is what they're doing to the rest of the world. When the Republicans do these hard, evil things where they're trying to tighten and squeeze and make it so that we say, we can't afford that. What are you doing? Just printing money? Remember our Wreck-It Ralph video? These are all tools of neoliberalism to make you think that the state doesn't have the power to solve any of our problems, to make it so that we don't desire the state to involve themselves in our problems.
and to simultaneously purge any responsibility the government has for the wealth, general welfare for we the people and put it out there to private sector. They make us feel like we want to be a nanny state, like you just want the government to take care of you. You just want this stuff. But history shows us time and again that that is just a lie to make us feel some type of way about ourselves, to feel like we're inadequate, to make us feel like, of course, we should want privatization. Why wouldn't we want the private sector to take over? Of course we want that. We don't want public sector. We want private sector, damn it, right? That's what they're trying to convince you of. They make you feel about an inch tall. Like every bad thing that has happened to you is because you've made bad choices. Every bit of it is about that. They don't teach you this in history classes in schools. The textbooks don't tell you this stuff. The school teachers don't tell you this stuff. But I think to myself, I remember being in 10th grade U.S. history. And I can't remember the teacher's name, but she was a black woman. And she was teaching us about slavery and stuff like that. Now, mind you, now I have a different perspective. I've read a lot of important material about this, a lot of understanding of the history of that time period. But back then, I can only imagine what it was like for an African-American woman to have to teach U.S. history about slavery, about plantations, about that whole time period, and have to teach it out of the big old white splaining bullshit propaganda narratives that were in those textbooks back then. I can only imagine what she felt as she was required to use these shitty textbooks. But that narrative that she was teaching was busy whitewashing slavery, was busy whitewashing the evils of both the North and the South in this country. Okay, we have romanticized so many periods of time. We have romanticized the wealthy in this country because after all, we have made it. It's baked into literally everything that we do. Every historical reference talks about the great men and women of history, usually the great men and usually the great white men. Okay, that have made something of themselves. They made something of themselves out of nothing. Out of nothing, they made themselves. They just worked really, really hard. They worked three jobs that were so noble for depriving their family of time with them that they worked these four or five jobs a day. They would literally start at 12 midnight and they'd work to 12 midnight because they didn't sleep. They didn't poop because after all, they're so busy, they don't even need to poop. They just recycle all the waste, right? This is the kind of historical bullshit that we're pumped full of. And unfortunately, we believe it because what else are we going to do? Where else are we going to get more information? Where do we find it? And unfortunately, within alt media, we've been reduced to chasing likes and clicks to keep our channels going so that people even see our content. So a lot of people have succumbed to clickbait. A lot of people push out bullshit. Okay. Now you see right now, the fear that the GOP has on uh, critical race theory. Now, critical race theory is not being taught in elementary schools or anything like that. We're talking about college level stuff here, okay? But the fact is they don't want you to know who owned the slaves. They don't want you to realize which one of them, their legacy, their heritage, their well-backing, their finances came from a slave family that's passed up money on. They don't want you to know that. They want to act like you're a racist, a reverse racism, whatever the fuck that means, right? Reverse racism, the fucking loser's words, right? They want to teach you to believe that this is just more propaganda, more communist propaganda at that. Because, you know, after all, they went after Martin Luther King because they called him a commie. And, you know, they purged the ranks of unions throughout history for anyone that had unions that had communists in it. Because, after all, the only way that you could be a real American was to denounce communism, to always hate communism. But if you go around to anyone, you go around to anyone and ask them, 
what is communism? Tell me what communism is. And they're going to tell you something about totalitarianism. They're not going to tell you what communism is. They're going to tell you something about a strong man and a KGB. They're not going to tell you what communism is. They're not going to tell you about private property and public property. They're not going to explain any of that. Why? Because it doesn't serve the narrative that they want you to buy into. And so when you watch people, well-meaning people, do the whole Democrat versus Republican versus Democrat versus Republican, and then a guy like me comes in there and doesn't talk about Democrats and Republicans, I just talk to you about neoliberalism. Why? Because both cor- both of these parties are advancing neoliberalism. They both are in lockstep in advancing markets around the world. They're both in lockstep about making us feel like things are scarce, that they can't afford to do nice things for us. Because after all, the minute that the government does something nice for you and I is the t- opportunity for some capitalist to take over that role that is gone now because they did it for you. After all, they don't want you dependent on the federal government because they want you dependent on them. They want you to have to really, really tighten your belts so you can buy their product. And so because of that, you've got people that are so ignorant of history, not their fault, by the way, for the most part. It is a little bit because you can choose to do the work and it's more effort to read the work. It's more effort to learn. It's more effort. And there's a lot of lazy fucks out there that won't do it. And there's people that just don't have time because their life is in such perilous conditions that they don't have time for higher lofty ideas. Okay. But the fact is that every step along the way within U.S. culture, within our relationships with Mexico, with our relationships with our own First Nation indigenous people, we have the worst recollection of what happened in history. The trail of tears. We don't even talk about it. We don't even talk about it. When we do, it's like, oh, that was yesterday. You're a race baiter. Don't you love these worthless sacks of dung that call you a race baiter because they don't know history and they're just trying to maintain white dominance. Now, why do they want white dominance? Because they've been so shitty to everybody that the idea of these people suddenly being on top and being able to get revenge, hopefully they don't. Hopefully we do move on, for real, because we don't have time. We've got a climate crisis going on. We've got a lot of things going on. It would be great if somehow or another we could lay our swords down and collaborate as the 99% and take on the powers that be. But there is always going to be brown shirts, proud boys, juggaloos, all these other they're fucking de facto militias out there, three percenters, you name it, that are willing to do what they shouldn't do to literally fuck us, to protect capital. And they will mock you for being a loser, for being a nanny stater, for being someone who needs the government to take care of you, right? They want to make sure you feel about that tall. And by keeping you in that space, by making sure you don't believe you deserve more, by making you believe that every reason you're poor is because you suck, by making you believe these things, they win. Because you won't dream a better dream. You won't actually dig in and fight for that which is necessary. Like when I see folks talking about Democrats and Republicans and how we need a blue wave and we need all these things. I think to myself, if you're going to advance neoliberalism, okay, if you're going to advance neoliberalism, these two parties have a different way of doing the same thing. Obviously, Democrats try to come at like, we're just trying to be inclusive. So what do Democrats do? They ensure that there is a rainbow warrior of people in the oligarchy. They make sure that there's a million different flavors of oligarch at that billionaire, millionaire level. They want to make sure that everybody's represented in the billionaire class, in the millionaire class. That way you can say, see, black people have made it to the top. We're out of racism. There's no need to talk about racism anymore. There's no need to worry about any of the inequality baked into society. There's no need to discuss this because really at the end of the day, the winners have won and the losers are losers and the loser will always be a loser. And that's that. So this is the mindset. So when you get excited about blue wave this and red wave that, you're literally just feeding that dog 
until you're willing to go back in history and see where things devolved. Going back again, repeating a little bit, but going to go in a new direction. Back to the end of World War II, after Nazis were defeated. Now you had Joe, Uncle Joe, Commie Joe, sitting there. Okay, Commie Joe sitting there, waiting to take over the world because that's what Russian communists do. They want to take over the world, right? Well, Russia had been our ally up to that point. But we realized, we realized Joe Stalin wasn't a big old free marketeer, was he? He might have he might be a problem. We might have to deal with this Joe guy. He's talking about egalitarian shit. Now, look, you can complain and hate Joe Stalin all day long. Okay. You, I mean, he, he did not do things right in many ways. There are things that Joe Stalin did. Joe Stalin. Joey. Joey Stalin. Yeah, you know, Joey Fingers from the block, man. Good kid. Good kid, right? Joe Stalin, right? Joey Stalin. Joey Fingers, right? He did some things that were fucked up, but he raised literacy. He really took a country. Now, remind, remember this. 40 years prior, they were just coming out of czarist Russia. These people were peasants. They had no concept of what it meant to be an industrial power. They had no concept of any of these things. And I, to, to imagine Russia being able to become a powerhouse big enough that in short amount of time, they were able to really compete with the United States who had been doing this shit with slaves going back into the 1800s, okay? It's 1700s, 1600s. The American... Society that we know today was built on the backs of slaves. That's oppression. That is real KGB level oppression right there, right? Now, don't get me wrong. The KGB was a bad deal, just like our CIA and FBI end up being bad deals. But ultimately, back then, Joe Stalin had just kicked the shit out of Adolf Hitler's gang and they won the war. So the United States in much of the untold history, decided it was going to set up all these little agencies, if you will, these non-government agencies like the, the World Trade Organization and the Peace Corps and the IMF to help facilitate the growth in these small third world countries. And it was to prevent Joe Stalin from coming down in there and handing out commie, commie tissues and making everybody soft and wimpy, accepting welfare, you know, because commie Joe was going to go ahead and push this welfare state on. Him. They were terrified of communism. They were terrified of people actually having power. They were terrified of this. Now, you can complain about the Soviet system. You can be anti-Trotsky, anti-Stalin, uh, and, 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 and everybody's got their own case, okay? I happen to be a big old central planning dude, man, for real. I've gotten to the point now where I believe that you've got to have the inputs and outputs and the tools and techniques and the vision to, uh, to make these things happen. Yes, implement them locally, but you have to have that central plan to my to my thinking. Why do I think that? Because there's a lot of fucking stupid people in the world. There's a lot of really dumb people in the world, unfortunately. And without having a vision, without having a cohesive plan, you end up patchworking everything and nothing works correctly. Maybe sometimes you get something work okay over here, other people suffering over there. Fucking roll that shit out, man. Make it happen. Make it happen. Build it so that it's sustainable. Build it so that you know how to fix it. Build it so that it has the opportunity to grow, but build it nonetheless. And so that's me, right? Hey, whatever. You don't have to agree with me, but my point is, is that none of this stuff bothers me at all. What bothers me is that as we tried to spread capitalism, neoliberalism throughout, you had the Chicago school that you don't hear about this stuff, the Mount Pelerin society. You don't hear about this stuff. These are the guys, the libertarians that literally went to the ends of the earth to try to eliminate any public space. Why is that? Neoliberalism requires new markets. If the government is doing it, that means a capitalist can't. That's what they talk about crowding out, stuff like that. 
That's one angle of it anyway. But the United States has been tearing apart its own social safety nets that FDR put in place. And you can complain that FDR maybe kept capital. No, he didn't. Maybe FDR did keep capitalism alive and well with his great bargain with the with the New Deal at the time. Um, but the fact is, is that we did experience an incredible period of time that had we been less racist and more inclusive would have made all ships rise during that time period. OK, but something happened. Something happened as we've gone to war all across the world in pursuit of markets. Something happened. Something horrible happened. And that something that was horrible was that we went off the gold standard. No, going off the gold standard wasn't the horrible part. But the fact is that we, the people, didn't understand what the fuck just happened. When we left the Bretton Woods Accord in 72, we didn't know what was going. We didn't understand it. A lot of idiots thought that the money was pegged to gold and that made it matter. But the fact is, is that didn't have anything to do with it. Really didn't have shit to do with it. The problem was that the French, knowing how to play the game, decided to start force redeeming their dollar holdings into gold. And Nixon said, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't have enough gold for that. We're, you know, in order, countries just have to go out and get gold. And that meant they might go to war and take the gold from that country. And now it's their gold supply. OK, it's a stupid ass thing. It's a fucking Teanderthal minded thing. Only a loser would want the gold standard, a loser. OK, so the idea of a loser winning that war is a bad, bad deal. What we found out, though, was that because the elites understood what happened with a sovereign free-floating fiat currency in 72, you saw the powers that be understand that in spades. And so what happened? Income inequality rose like, like you wouldn't believe, like you wouldn't fucking believe, okay? And it went really bad when Ronald Reagan came in. Because then he started attacking the union. So the idea of keeping wages and the, the oligarchs closer together really, really went crazy at about that time. Now, in communist uh, Russia and Cuba and the other place, we're talking about maybe a five to one uh, wealthy people to regular people uh, split in income. In the United States, we're talking about something like 10,000 to one. 10,000 to one. 10,001 income inequality, 10,000 to one. So with that in mind, just remember that as we went off the gold standard and they knew how to do it, they got way ahead of the curve and we're still suffering with tiny, tiny little wages and idiots believe that if they print money and they give people raises, that it's going to cause inflation. Well, what would cause inflation about giving people a salary commensurate with the profit that is being earned? Nothing. It's not taking from the cost. It's literally taking from the profit, profit that should be shared, should be theirs. The surplus value should be theirs, but it's not. It's not labors. It doesn't go to labor. Where does it go? It goes up. But we, because we tend to be stupid motherfuckers, we believe them when they tell us that raising wages will cause these jobs to vanish, will cause them to suddenly create inflation. But that's not true. What causes inflation is gouging. OK, when companies decide, because this is what companies are. But remember this, if you've never taken a business class a day in your life. One thing you can remember forever. The object of capitalism is to always benefit the shareholder, to increase shareholder value. They don't have any responsibility to society. They have no responsibility to the workers. They have no responsible to anyone. The only responsibility they have is to shareholders. So when they jack prices up, who are they representing? They're doing something your Congress critters won't do. And that is they're representing their constituents. So you can hate the business community as I do. But the fact is the business community is taking care of their own. The business community is ensuring that the wealthy keep getting wealthier. While they continue to put their boot on your head and you stupidly come back and say, well, they're printing money, so it's causing inflation. You fucking water carrier for the wealthy. You fucking water carrier. That is some sick motherfucking shit right there. Okay, but that, my friends, is what is going on. 
They convince, and then the minute that the government spends the money, because we have been so propagandized and don't know our history, don't understand any of the shit going on. I see regular people out there posting, see the inflation happened right here. This is when the inflation happened. Look. And they're not even focused on the fact that the fucking companies are jacking prices up for a reason. Fucking Bezos says he's giving you a 5% increase in price because it's got to pay for inflation. Mr. I just increased my profits 333% in the last two years during the pandemic. His profit, forget how much money they made, the profit, the amount they spent versus how much they made rose 333%. 333%. 333%. Okay. So when you understand this, you would have to be the complete dunce, the dumbest motherfucker on the planet to carry the water for corporations. Okay. The fact is, is that you need to address where the problem is. And the problem is that our capitalist system, one of many systems, by the way, don't hand wave. We got to change the system. You, which system? Because there's a bunch of them. Okay. Within this particular framework for this particular system, the object is to maximize shareholder value. This is why they keep pushing you, the investor, to Wall Street. They want you to find your income. They want you to find your whatever in Wall Street. That's where they want you to find it. Okay? So companies literally suppress wages, get shitty inferior materials to make their products, plan obsolescence into their design so that you have to buy a new one every five years or every six years, or every two, whatever. Planned obsolescence is part of their deal. And who is that for? Is that to save the environment? Is that to make it more sustainable? No. It's to ensure that capital can keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. You know, the old 1970s refrigerators, you can't kill them sons of bitches. They still work. They're ugly as fuck. They're pea green or yellow or whatever the fuck ever, but they won't die. They work forever. Everything you got now dies quickly, has little teeny parts that break quickly, that cost huge amounts of money because the aftermarket parts business is another market. Do you remember cash for clunkers? <clears throat> cash for clunkers sounded like a great idea. Hey, we're going to get these old cars out of here. And we're going to get new cars, right? Who was that helping? Was that helping you and I? They make it sound like it is. They're sure trying to help you. But what are they doing? It's the same thing as the ACA. It's going to help you, right? No, it's not. What it's going to do is it's going to ensure the profits of the insurance companies. It's going to ensure the profits of the auto manufacturers. And remember, they are not there to serve you. They are there to serve shareholders. So they're going to depress wages. They're going to skimp on costs. I'm going to produce a shitty car with planned obsolescence. And they're going to make money for the shareholders. This is neoliberalism. So when you talk to me about Democrats, you talk to me about Republicans, and you fail to recognize they're both advancing a privatization scheme. One of them is trying to act like we don't have the money. Where are you going to get the money? Oh, my God, they're driving up the deficit. The other one goes over and says, we've got to be the big boys because they did tax cuts for the rich. We've got to get, get some sanity back. We're going to raise taxes. So they end up hurting us. It's always us that gets hurt. In fact, we had Mark Cuban come on to talk to Pavlina Chernova a while back. And Mark Cuban said straight up, I don't care if you tax me. I am always going to win. Okay? Because, see, dumb people in their minds think, hey, if we just tax corporations, everything will be okay. But as you know, what do, what do corporations do with cost increases? Do they take, say, shareholders, I'm sorry, they've raised taxes on us. You're going to have to take a bath, Mr. and Mrs. Shareholder. No, no, they don't do that, do they? They go, 
Guys, we're raising prices. We have to share in the cost of inflation, guys. So they raise the prices on the products and services you and I need to live because shareholder value is always number one. You got the progressives. We're going to raise taxes on corporations because we are so woke. We couldn't be more woke. We're going to do it, gang. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. But what do those corporations do? They pass those costs on to you and me. And then you get the knucklehead. I'm willing to pay more for health care so that someone else can have it. I'm willing to pay more in taxes. You can't make it up. You can't fucking make it up. The history lessons are never learned. They're never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever learned. Never learned. Ever, ever, never learned. And then when you go out there and you talk about this stuff to people, I constantly get feedback. Hey, Steve, Steve, you need to make these economic talks, these history talks. You need to make them for a fifth grader because people just aren't that smart. They just don't understand. It goes over their head, Steve. You got to dumb it down. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to fucking rock it off. I'm dropping F-bombs. Come on, man. You can relate, right? This is what we do at the bar. We talk about shit with F-bomb and S-bombs, right? I try to keep it real, yo. I try to make it fun, yo. But this stuff requires that you read. You've got to get caught up because the war is happening. And we've got to weaponize history, folks, because they've weaponized it against us. History has been used against us as a cudgel forever, forever. When you sit there and you show all the mass murdering white guys that had guns, they were jacked to the fucking hilt, man, fucking guns coming out their ears, out their eyes, they had laser beams even. I mean, these guys had so many guns and bullets and whatever, and they always get arrested. You get some poor brother laying in bed, snoring. I heard a gun. You heard a gun. Hey. All of a sudden, the poor guy is dead. And they say, oh, he was just snoring. He had sleep apnea. Fuck. Oh, well. Oh, you're just race baiting bringing this up. The lesson, you better be jacked to the gills. And then maybe you don't get shot by the cops. Is that the story? Is that the story? I mean, you got to be jacked to the gills with fucking ammo and guns and AR-15s and bazookas. Fucking arm your ass with a bazooka and pull my finger. You know, I mean, what do you do? This is history, folks. And really, really evil people are propagandizing us to believe that if those blacks would just just follow instructions if they were just compliant if they just mind their p's and q's mind your manners and if they were just more mannerly right they'd be okay but alas they're not because they don't get the chance you could be a little kid with a squirt gun and you get pop bam bam oh i'm so sorry but you talk about this stuff, and now all of a sudden some loser, some split-fingered waste person calls you a race baiter. So history is a very important thing, folks. And I want you to understand that our government clears markets. That's our war machine. We have the biggest market-clearing force in the world, in the United States military. Freedom is equated to economic freedom, which is not freedom at all. It is actually neoliberalism. It is libertarianism. And this is why when horrible people try to tell me, oh, we should bond with the libertarians. Horrible people do this stuff. Horrible people. These right-wing Nazi-like libertarians. These free market fucking my tax you're taxing me that's theft taxes theft all this worthless wackadoo shit this is what we're up against folks and the history lessons must be learned when you hear about a country like greece struggling with debt 
terrible, evil, wicked people believe that Greece is just spending money frivolously. The fact of the matter is, is that when you went into the EU and you were a net importer, Okay, and that net importer. In other words, you're buying other people's shit because you can't produce it yourself. That leaves you with only two ways to bring money into your economy other than imports. One is public spending and two is private debt. Well, when you're not a currency issuer like Greece, which we don't know, our history lessons suck because we don't even understand the EU. Okay. But when you look at how many dipshits have tried to say the U.S. will become like Greece? Seriously, those people need to be waterboard or something, man. Somebody needs to do something to change the fucking stupid gene that's making them think these things. OK, but the fact is, is that Greece gave up the drachma and was now on a non-sovereign currency called the euro that they couldn't create to offset their spending. So now all of a sudden, Greece had euro denominated debt. That's because it couldn't just print money, as they say, which is what every other functioning government in the world does. When you're a net importer, you've got to fill the pool back with money from federal spending or the pool dries up and you end up with a fucking basin of nothingness. OK. Every time we talk about why do they always have money for the military, but they don't have it for you and I, how many people see that fucking shit going on constantly? They're almost there. It's like they're knocking on the door. They're kind of getting close to understanding, but they stop right there because then they go back to my hard earned tax dollars and all the other shit. The fact is, is that that right there is how the United States government spends money into existence. That's how most governments do, but in particular, the United States. That's why we don't have anything, because all the spending bills go through the military. And you never hear anything about inflation ever when they're spending billions upon billions on the military. But the minute you touch a capitalist profit, they band together and they say, time to jack up our ROI. Let's raise prices because after all, we need them to know that if they try to print money on the people and they eat into my lunch, fuck that. So they jack prices up when they know that you, the government is spending. And now all of a sudden, every single loser on the planet says, see, see, you got inflation when you print money. See, see. I mean, seriously, don't you really feel like doing a running leg drop, like t straight off the top turnbuckle and bam, drop the elbow on them and like rub salt in the eyes, put them in a figure four leg lock, do something fucked up, throat gully them, do something. Folks, there is no increase in cost. You can see that by the absurd profit margins. Absurd profit margins. And of course they're going to raise that because they can, because there's no law that says they can't. So they want you to be afraid of the national debt. They desperately need you to be afraid of the national debt because if the government's not spending, then that means you have to go into debt, private debt. And for those people that don't have to go into private debt, all those well-to-do people that just pay for their college in cash because they're such good people, they had money, right? Because that's how you judge whether a person's good, if they have money or not. History, history, friends, history. We have been nonstop since World War II and even before that, nonstop. Building out these networks, NATO, EU, all of the stuff over there, the World Trade Center, the World Trade Organization, the World Bank, the IMF, all of these things are there to promote and advance free market ideology. Free markets that strip away protections and absolutely rape and destroy countries. And when they don't accept the deal that's too good to be given, we coup them. We send an army in there to make sure that they accept this debt arrangement. But you don't hear that. You hear people, da, 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 yield to the USA, go, go, go. And you got all the, yeah, we got to salute the flag and we've got to, oh, and then you see Praise Jesus. And they got the singing along and they're doing the song. And oh, God, 
I'm a proud be American, where at least I know I'm free, and all the other shit that goes with it. The red, white, and blue, the hats, the flags, baseball, the smell of fresh cut grass, apple pie, it's all part of it to keep you locked in to capitalism. But capitalism is a very young thing, folks, very young thing in the grand scheme of things. And sure, we saw some incredible advancements under capitalism, but capitalism did its tour of duty, got through the good part, and now we're on the bad side. And I can't think of a single thing that we could not have gotten to done collaboratively. But because of this incessant need for growth, because that's what capitalism does for its shareholders, it needs to grow, 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 grow. It is destroying the planet. It's destroying the ecosystem. It's destroying the climate. And we have no answers for any of this. We have no answers for any of this because people won't read history. And when they do, they try to make it as complicated as fuck because it makes them feel good. Folks, I don't care, man. I'm just a dude. We could be smoking a bowl together, hanging out, doing whatever, and I'd be talking like this anyway. Because it is that important. We need to talk to anyone and everyone. We need to be reading constantly, constantly reading, constantly reading constantly reading, constantly consuming information, constantly rejecting clickbait, constantly rejecting clickbait and constantly absorbing the heavy shit because we need the information to take direct action today. We've got to move on the history we do know and we need to shed the history we thought we knew that ain't so. There, there's so much more that I could talk about. So much more, but I've run out of time, my friends. And I want you to understand that I'm going to keep beating this fucking gong. I'm going to keep beating this gong. I'm going to keep bringing up historical references throughout. Read Michael Parenti's book, uh, Black Shirts and Reds. God, please read it. My God, you will be blown away if you haven't read it. Read it now, yesterday, now, 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 read it, okay? Read From Here to Equality by Sandy Darity to really learn history. Read Howard Zinn's history, People's History of the United States. Read these things. Literally read them like they're the Bible. Absorb them. Think about everything you thought you knew and start disconnecting those bad synapses, disconnecting those bad neural pathways that lead you to believe that capitalism is a natural thing. Literally, literally disconnect that shit from your brain and start producing producing collective thinking because we are not able to do things on our own no matter how much the makers and takers of Ayn Rand society say so it's just not so it's just not so folks I can't stress enough how it's not so Ayn Rand destroyed this country and people that are celebrating the makers and takers of fucking who is John Galt and all the rest of the fountainhead crap they are destroyers. This Bitcoin community is fucking annihilators. Annihilators. Same bullshit, different master. Same bullshit, different master. I hope that you guys have learned something today. If nothing else, I hope you realize how vital it is to dig in and learn history and to be exclusive in the way you think. Don't just take some capitalist explanation of communism. Don't just trust what they say about Mao Zedong. Don't just trust what they say about Joseph Stalin. Don't just trust what they say about Vladimir Lenin. Don't just trust what they say about Leonid Trotsky. Don't just trust what they say about Castro. Don't just trust what they say about Sankara. Don't just trust it. Learn. Learn. Take away the propaganda and learn. I'm Steve Grumbine. This is the Rogue Scholar. And I hope you guys subscribe and tell a friend. We'll talk to you later. Yeah.